morning everyone from Maria de Huerva in the province of Zaragoza. So yesterday we arrived here at um, <clears throat> my aunt and uncle and we spent uh, a very nice them um, with them. Now we are driving to Zaragoza, uh, the two of us. Yesterday we were together with the five of us and technically there should be not much traffic and um, yeah not many people in the center but we'll see how it goes We have arrived to Zaragoza and we found a parking spot at the free parking zone uh, so we don't need to like we don't have to pay for the parking <laughs> We are sitting now at the cafe here with a view of the cathedral and having a tea. It's real tea. It looks very nice. Normally you just get scraps of tea, but this is a bag with real leaves. Uh, we went to the nearest cafe because I couldn't haul it anymore. I had to poop. So this is what we paid for two teas. We are in front of the Cathedral of the Savior, commonly known around here as La Seo. It shares a co-cathedral status with the Basilica of El Pilar that we visited yesterday. You can see some remains of the old mosque, not only on the tower, but also the facade. The construction began in the 12th century in the Romanesque style and underwent many expansions until 1704 when the Baroque spire completed the tower. The last addition is the main door, which was built in the 18th century in the neoclassical style. Because of the many renovations and expansions over the centuries, the cathedral is a mixture of many styles. Romanesque, Gothic, Mudejar, Renaissance, Baroque and Neoclassical. Its origins go back to the Roman time, since the old forum was erected here. During the Muslim era it was a mosque until Alfonso I reconquered the city, then it was turned into a church. And this church became really important because all Aragonese kings until the 15th century were crowned here. Well, the Seo Cathedral does cost money to go inside and the tickets were not cheap it was like seven euros per person <laughs> We prefer to spend the 7 euros on a, a ticket that takes you to four monuments, Roman monuments, so we might do that. So we got the ticket that uh, gives us access to the five Roman museums, which is 9 euros per person. We find it quite reasonable because they are not monuments, they are museums. We are here at the Roman Forum. 
so it was the center of Roman life here in the old city of Caesar Augusta. The remains of the Roman Forum are underground. The Forum used to be the center of Roman life. Underneath the Forum there were sewers that went all the way down to the Ebro River. This was the commercial area. The Forum Museum displays representations and scale of Roman life in Caesar Augusta. Since it is underground with no modern buildings around you, you feel surrounded by the atmosphere and it turns you into a time traveler. The Roman city was called Caesar Augusta, referring to the name of the one who founded the city, Caesar Augustus, the first Roman emperor. Here you can see rests of clay pots with Roman names engraved on them. And if you ask yourself if Roman kids had toys, yes they had, for example this doll. The city didn't decay after the fall of Rome, since it was invaded by the Suebi and the Visigoths. Romans left behind a rich infrastructural and architectonical heritage that keeps inspiring and impressing engineers and architects all around the world. The Romans had very advanced sewing systems with pipes that kept the city well maintained and clean. Apparently we are magnets for processions. Uh, also in Toledo we stumbled upon one and now there's gonna be a procession here because there are people assembling uh, we are gonna go like we are gonna continue with our Roman route and the next stop is a square here next to the Sio Cathedral Northeast of the old Roman Forum, archaeologists found the remains of a big building during an excavation in 1989. This building probably served as a warehouse. From here, goods were sent and received over the Ebro River. We can also find ruins of an old quarry that was built by soldiers from the legions 6 Victrix, 10th Gemina and the 4th Macedonian Legion. You can see a display of the banners next to an information panel downstairs. So we just were at the, what was it, River Museum, um, and now we're going to the baths, Roman baths. In the center of the Roman town of Caesar Augusta, between the Forum and the theater, there is a building that hosted some public Roman baths between the 1st century before Christ and the 4th century after Christ. This building had dressing rooms, warm and cold water basins, a gym, and much more. For Romans, the public baths were more than just a place to clean their bodies. It also had a very important social function. People went there to talk and interact with others. It was also a place of gossip. 
In the administrative spheres of Caesar Augusta, there was a person who was in charge of supervising the correct maintenance of the public baths, the Edile. He had to make sure there was enough running water and wood to warm up the water. This building still preserves the ruins of some old latrines that were going to be replaced by a large open-air swimming pool. It was common for Romans to start in the warm basins and finish with the cold basins. Usually, the men and the women were separated. So, public baths, check. Now, we're gonna go to the old theater. The theater of Zaragoza is its best preserved Roman building. It was probably built during the time of Tiberius in the first century. The building was discovered in 1972, while the construction of a new building had been initiated in the Veronica Street. During its more than 200 years of service, the theater was a place for entertainment and social life. The theater place had an important role in the transmission of cultural, political and religious values of the Roman Empire. Over time, the importance as a theater started to decay and during the second half of the 3rd century, some parts of the building were removed to build a wall since there was a period of political instability. After the Roman era, the Muslims built houses on the plot next to the theater. These were followed by Jewish houses, which were then removed when the Jews were banned. In the 16th century, this plot was witness of the economic and social splendor of the city during the Renaissance era with the construction of numerous churches and noble houses. You can see the different cultures who lived here in a comprehensive timeline with expositions that take place in the upper floors of the theater. So we were at the theater, Roman theater. It was quite a big museum with a lot of information and a lot, a lot of history. And uh, yeah, now we are going to the last monument and then we might go back to Maria de Huerva. Prices in Zaragoza.
So we discovered this bakery here. It looks delicious. And I'm asking myself, why did we come with so little time? We are now going to France for a week. But actually, uh, you know, one more day here and I would have come here to have some kind of breakfast. Look at those prices, 149 euros for a whole cake. You cannot see with the sun, right? Uh, but yeah, it's very cheap and it looks, it all looks very tasty. Pablo Gargallo was a renowned Spanish sculptor and painter. He was born in a municipality in the province of Zaragoza in 1881 and moved with his family to Barcelona when he was seven years old. There, he began his training in the arts. He didn't stay in Barcelona though, as he moved to Paris where he opened an artist's studio in the popular 14th arrondissement of Paris. There he would be influenced by the paintings of his friend Pablo Picasso, one of the most famous Spanish artists of all time, who was also living in Paris at that time. Gargallo is known for its cubism style and is considered to be one of the most significant artists of the Spanish avant-garde. His masterpiece is the statue of the Prophet, which is the culmination of his concept of cubism through empty structures. So we've done all of the monuments, now we are going back to Maria de Huerva. Uh oh, I think it's close to the public. Okay, we made it out of the busy area. Now we are going to the car. We just need to cross a bridge and turn right and we are at the parking.
so we had lunch with uh, the uncle, aunt and cousin. I mean, we just come from uh, vacuum cleaning the car, tanking a bit, 15 euros, um, not very expensive. And cleaning the car a bit. Oi, oops. And now um, we are gonna, yeah, we're gonna go for a walk maybe with them. Well, we just walked in Maria de Huerva. It was pretty nice. A uh, very beautiful town. Uh, my aunt said that the average age here among the citizens is 38, um, which is pretty low. So there are many young families with kids living here. Um, it's also because it's very close to Zaragoza. So many families uh, live here. The kids go to school and the parents go to work to the city is like 15 minutes well depending on where you go of course but still pretty close and tomorrow yeah tomorrow we we are going to Dieu Pantal in France um, close to Toulouse and after Dieu Pantal we go to Dijon and after that we are back in Germany yeah yeah, we really we are really enjoying this trip and seeing all these places.